there's there's two measures of, of, of how strong someone could be, let's say. You have your max strength and you have your absolute strength. Uh, your max strength regard is referring to your voluntary ability to uh, execute force through a displacement um, during a lift. So when I go under a bench and I'm going for a max bench press, um, whatever number I voluntarily get or what I, whatever number I can voluntarily get to, that would be my max strength. That is different from absolute strength. Absolute strength, you can imagine, if I do the same bench press movement, but I somehow hook up electrodes into all of the tissues of my body that are, that are being used to execute that bench press, and I can use those electrodes to maximally stimulate all of the anatomy that would be pertaining to that lift, that number um, would be a lot higher than your max strength. So your absolute strength will be a lot higher than your max strength. Max strength is pretty much questioning how much um, access to your tissues do you have with your nervous system and how much nervous system drive do you have to utilize um, those tissues versus absolute strength is like saying I've, I've artificially made it so that you get access to 100% of your tissues uh, during your lift. So you're going to be able to execute more force because you're using more anatomy in order to execute that lift. So there's a difference between absolute strength and max strength. Now that difference in time and with training can be smaller, whereas a beginner might have a huge MSD, muscular strength deficit. Um, someone who is a, an experienced lifter, power lifter, Olympic lifter, they might have a very, very small muscular strength deficit. And this goes back to the idea of uh, the, the need to fail versus to not fail. If you're dealing with someone who's really working in millimeters of change and they're trying to drive that absolute strength higher and they're trying to use maximum strength training to do so, there's a very small window of opportunity there, in which case uh, using failure would probably be a good idea in order to drive that anatomy to get further, which then can be filled in with neurology as you lift in time, which can start to jump up that max strength and that absolute strength. If you have a high absolute strength and a low max strength, if you have a big muscular strength deficit, uh, there's a lot of room for improvement that can be neurologically driven. So you would expect that the necessity to go to failure isn't as high because when there's a big gap, this gap has to be filled in with neurology, not just with anatomy. The closer you get to a, kind of an equal point between what your anatomy can give and what your neurology can call out of your anatomy, that's going to require higher amounts of stimulation in order to bump that um, significantly higher.